Hey lovely people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So I wanted to share with you in this video as to why you may be having constipation on a carnivore diet, which this is not an issue for everyone that gets on a carnivore diet, unlike what a lot of vegans are probably thinking and they probably comment down below that are watching this now, that where they have this very skewed perspective due to having vegan goggles on, they think, that meat actually causes constipation, but that is not the truth. I had so many digestive issues on a vegan diet that got resolved once I went to a carnivore diet, and once I started eating pretty much just the meat, I was like, wow, I haven't got any digestive issues anymore, and I wasn't suffering with any constipation. But at one point I was, and there was one reason for that, and I'm gonna tell you 10 different reasons, including that one reason, that I got constipation for on a carnivore a diet that may help you address the root cause of the issue going on that is causing your constipation on the carnivore diet. So the first one is overcooking your meat. I had not done this on the carnivore diet the majority of time for being on this diet, but about maybe a month ago or so, I accidentally started overcooking my meat on a regular basis and I just got used to it and I wasn't really timing how long I was cooking it. And the meat would become very dry and just dehydrated and not moist in any way, shape or form. And I tried many things to resolve it. And then I was like, huh, wait a minute. I think I just need to cook the meat less. So I have it around medium cooked rather than well done. And guess what? It resolved my digestive issues very quickly. So maybe this is one of the reasons why you've got constipation on the carnivore diet. So yeah, just try cooking your meat less. The second one, which is a very common reason for people to get constipation on a carnivore diet, and that is being dehydrated. Especially if you're someone that's come from a vegan diet, you need to remember that a vegan diet, especially when it's a whole food, plant-based vegan diet, has a lot of very high water content foods in it. And meat does not have no near as much water. So you need to be very mindful around your water consumption and make sure that you are consuming adequate amounts of water throughout the day. There's not a set amount. Some people say you should have 10 glasses a day, but that is an absolute load of baloney. Just listen to your body. If you think you're dehydrated, then just drink more water. Simple change might resolve the constipation that you're having. And do not drink tap water because that will have a negative effect on your digestion. Try and get to the purest, cleanest water possible. If you wonder what water I drink, I drink distilled water. It is the purest water in the world. I actually make it in the comfort of my own home with a water distiller. If you're interested in one of those and want to do the same, link down below for one that you can buy. And the third one is not chewing your meat and other carnivore foods that you are eating very thoroughly. So we live in a world, especially in the Western civilization, where a lot of people are rushing or they're being distracted. So if you're someone that's on your mobile phone and doing other things while you're eating and you're not being as present and mindful as you possibly can when you are eating your food, you're normally gonna end up under chewing your food. So make sure you're as mindful as possible and you chew your food as much as possible. There's not a set amount of times you should chew, but I counted myself before and I actually chew quite a lot and this is why I have really good digestion and elimination on a carnival diet and don't suffer with any constipation on this type of diet. I actually chew it around 60 times when I'm having meat. You don't necessarily need to do that but that just gives you a rough idea. And then this one, which so many people do this on so many different types of diets, not just on the carnival diet, and that is drinking liquids with your meals because guess what happens when you do that well what it's going to do is when you consume the food that goes within your stomach after you chewed it and it's gone down your esophagus it then by drinking water with it it is diluting your stomach acid levels and this is not what you want to be doing the more you dilute it down the harder it is going to be for your stomach to actually break down the protein and the amino acids with what is known as trypsine and pepsine and your hydrochloric stomach acid. So if you're someone that is drinking liquids with your meals, then just stop doing it. I would say you normally wanna stop drinking liquids about 30 minutes before your meal. 
and make sure that you just hydrate well enough before because there's a lot of people that don't make sure that they're hydrated enough before their meat meals on a carnival diet then they're adding salt to their meat and then they feel very dehydrated afterwards and then they want to chug a lot of water which is just a big no-no if you want the best digestion and assimilation of the food you're eating and elimination and make sure that you don't drink any liquids until the food is out of your stomach which from person to person it's going to vary how long it's going to take and depending on what food you're eating as well so normally you just want to avoid having any liquids for like three to four even five hours after you've had a heavy meat meal and number five which we just have so many people that are very very busy and just very stressed out and overwhelmed yeah if you are stressed out and you eat your meal or you're stressed out after eating your meal whilst you are meant to be resting and digesting that food it impairs all of your digestive functions which then could cause you constipation and other digestive issues on a carnival diet so try and be as calm and relax as you possibly can whilst you're eating and whilst you're meant to be resting and digesting. And number six is gonna cause the same issues as does it with being stressed out. And that would be having intense emotions. So if you're someone that's feeling very, very sad and upset or some other intense emotions, when you go to eat or soon after you're eating where you, again, you're meant to be resting and digesting, again, it appears all of your digestive functions so just try and be in the best mood that you possibly can when you are eating your food so number seven i touched on this one briefly earlier but i need to add on a lot more information than what i already did and that is low stomach acid production which is a huge issue for so many people in the world and if you're someone for example that's come off of a malnourishing unsustainable vegan diet this is something that you probably run into an issue with on the vegan diets because most vegans that end up quitting that vegan diet, they end up quitting it because it's destroyed their health. And whether they're aware of it, most of them are gonna have low stomach acid levels or no stomach acid production whatsoever. So you really want to address this because once you have adequate amounts of stomach acid production, you're gonna be able to break down the foods as efficiently and as effectively as possible within your stomach that you're eating on the carnivore diet. So this is something I've studied for years and years and years, so I know a lot on this subject. A lot of people will tell you to take apple cider vinegar or do this thing or that thing or that thing. But normally the root cause of the issue is due to specific nutritional deficiencies such as vitamin B6 and many other different micronutrients as well. So what you wanna be doing is flooding your body with the highest quality nutrient rich, easy to digest and assimilate foods that have so much micronutrition in abundance to give you all of the nutrients that you need over a period of time to correct any nutritional deficiency that you have that may be causing you to not have adequate stomach acid levels and production. So there's two things that I will recommend. And the third option, which I'd say, if you can avoid this one, then avoid it. And I'll explain that in a short while. So bone broth, start making this at home on a regular basis. It is a nutrient powerhouse that is a liquid food source that is very easy for your body to break down and assimilate. But if you're someone that has issues with histamines, you want to avoid this at all costs because it is very rich in histamines and it will just make you feel really, really bad. So that's something to be aware of. The second option is raw milk. Again, it's a liquid food source, really easy to digest and assimilate. And it's a very amazing nutrient power. So it has a lot of nutrients in an abundance, which meat will not have a lot in or doesn't have at all. But not everyone is gonna get on with raw milk. Some people do not get on with the majority of raw milk out there that comes from cows that produce A1 beta casein. So if you're someone that tries raw milk, you don't get on with it, that could be the reason as to why. So try and find a raw milk supplier where they have cows that produce A2 beta casein because most people find once they switch to this, they don't have any issues with raw milk and just get amazing benefits from it. But if you cannot find a supplier for that type of milk, then you could either get raw sheep's milk or goat's milk. Because from what I'm aware of, they only produce A2 beta casein within the milk that these animals 
produce. And there is a third option. If you're someone that doesn't get on with raw milk at all, where it's A1 beta casein, A2 beta casein, or you've got someone that's got histamine issues, you can't have bone broth, then I would advise temporarily going down the supplementation route. What you would want is hydrochloric acid with pepsin that is free from magnesium stearate, any rice fillers, or any other toxic fillers that can actually have a negative effect on your digestion even further. So what I'm gonna do is put a link down below for the highest quality supplement that comes under that criteria. And you could try it out for a period of time, see if you get on with it. And then once you've done it for a while, just discontinue its use. And I know I'm gonna get some hate on this from hardcore carnivore people out there, but like I said, this is a last resort. Don't do this option that I've just said, unless you cannot drink the raw milk or the bone broth or even a third option that I could add on to the whole food sources is organ meats if you eat them in abundance they are also very very nutrient rich way more nutrient rich than muscle meat and the next one which is number eight is you may just be getting your gut microbiome adapted to switching to a carnivore diet especially for someone that was on a vegan diet before and you haven't had animal foods for a long period of time and then you switch to a carnivore diet your gut microbiome has to start changing its whole terrain so then you have the most optimal gut microbiome to be able to digest assimilate and eliminate the foods that you're eating on a carnivore diet so if you're someone that has just switched and you haven't had a carnivore diet before or you haven't had animal foods for a long time just wait it out. You may find just by being patient, which some people find for weeks in a row, they might suffer with constipation or diarrhea or other digestive issues on a carnival diet when they're new to it. But after that period of time, people tend to find that those digestive issues just go. Number nine, which this one is actually very hard to do on a carnival diet. I found on a vegan diet, I was never satiated and I could just stuff myself up to my neck when eating food. But yes, if you're someone that is eating too much food in one sitting, then you're normally gonna end up with constipation. So be very mindful and present again when you're eating and make sure that you listen to your body. When it says enough is enough, stop eating. Don't keep forcing yourself to eat more or push yourself to eat more when you don't need to eat more. Because when you are overburdening your body with so much meat, for example, in one sitting, of course it's gonna impair the digestion and the elimination and it could cause you constipation. So this one is just a really, really simple fix if this is the reason as to why you're getting constipation on the carnivore diet. And number 10, which is the last one, you may be having an issue with magnesium and not getting adequate amounts of magnesium. Yes, the carnivore diet does provide you with magnesium on the diet, and a lot of carnivore teachers and advocates out there say that you don't necessarily need as much magnesium on a carnivore diet when you're not consuming plant foods, which I would be in agreement with that. Because when you're consuming things such as grains, nuts, seeds, beans, or legumes, they contain phytates, and guess what they do? They actually bind two minerals when they go through your digestive system and make it so you cannot utilize them. But when you're on a carnivore diet, you haven't got any phytates, so then you're not gonna to need to consume as much as the people out there on the magnesium topic will tell you that you need. So don't be concerned if you're not getting as much as you think you need, because in most cases, most people will, but not everyone is going to, especially if you've got underlying digestive issues going on, you are probably not gonna be assimilating all of the magnesium and other nutrients that you need. So make sure that you have all the nutrients that you need so you have optimal digestion and no constipation on a carnivore diet. And when you look at meat, around a pound of ground beef does have around 100 milligrams of magnesium, which is a decent amount. But raw milk has way more in. One cup has around 50 milligrams of magnesium. And I am someone that consumes almost a gallon a day. So I am getting so much magnesium. So I won't have any constipation on a carnivore diet because when you're not getting adequate amounts of constipation, it actually impairs peristalsis, which is where the intestinal tract contracts and expands to move things through the digestive tract. 
So if you're not getting adequate amounts, yes, that's not gonna be functioning as best as it possibly can. So you might be someone, again, that needs to consume organ minks, bone broth, or raw milk to just really give you a lot more magnesium than you're already getting, especially for someone that's only eating muscle meat on a carnivore diet for almost no cost at all. So that's it from me in this video. If you'd like me to make any other videos on the carnivore diet, then let me know what type of specific videos you'd like me to make on this specific subject and I'll make those videos for you as soon as possible. Don't forget to leave a comment and questions down below. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. And as always, make sure that you enjoy the rest of your day, stay happy, stay healthy, and catch you on the flip side. Peace.